The advent of the smartphone and the tablet has generated much marketing hype around the related services available on these devices. The vast array of technology buzzwords can be very confusing to the layperson, and to many of us they are just words or acronyms. So today's session addresses the questions of what exactly is meant by the terms and acronyms such as apps, 3G, 4G and LTE, to name just a few. I want to take this opportunity then to explain the characteristics of the various cellular generations as they have evolved and to talk about how and where it all started and where it is going. In other words, what's in it for you and me as the end user? Welcome to an overview of the evolution to cellular technologies. I'm Nico Gibson and I head up the research and technology design at the Telcom Center for Learning. As the name implies, 1G or first generation refers to the original analog cellular technology, so called because the carrier was analog. In those helicon days we were not transmitting bits or noughts and ones over the air, we were in fact just sending waveforms and the bulk of the transmission was voice. We can use the analogy of the FM radio, the signal waveforms are the same, with the one difference being that the radio is reception only, while with 1G you were able to transmit as well as receive. So, 1G can simplistically be seen as a complex radio with both sharing the same communication methodology or technology. 1G was also capable of handling a limited amount of data, albeit not with much success. While 1G technology was in itself very good, this was negated by a total lack of standards, with different ones being applied depending on where in the world you were. In the USA, a standard called AMPS was used, while in Europe there were more than eight cellular technologies in use. It was chaotic, to say the least, and usage and compatibility were problematic. This all led to a concerted search for an enhanced and a more universal solution, and hence the development of digital cellular. Two G or second generation. In contrast to 1G and its analog waveforms, digital communication meant that one could transmit zeros or ones over the air. Interestingly, improved voice quality was not a key driver for going digital. Instead, it was done so that capacity could be increased. Or to put it another way, digital communication is more spectrally efficient than analog. That means we are able to get more customers on the air, thereby increasing the amount of simultaneous conversations. As with 1G, little emphasis was placed on data, and indeed it was difficult to find customers doing data over 2G systems. Two of the more prominent 2G technologies were GSM, the European-initiated Global Systems for Mobile Communication, and the USA's CDMA, or Code Division Multiplex Access. With GSM, the handset was able to send and receive digital signals, with its popularity being enhanced by its roaming capability that is, using your device across international borders. Then came the next step in the cellular evolution path, referred to as 2.5G. Now the main enhancement of this technology was the introduction of what is called packet switching on top of the 2G network. Packet switching is so called because data is put in packets before being transmitted along a channel. Think of a channel as the link which connects the source to the destination. Now the underlying technology for 2.5G is called GPRS or General Packet Radio System. GPRS offered faster data transmission via a GSM network within a range of 9.6 kilobits to 115 kilobits and made it possible for users to make telephone calls and transmit data at the same time. 
For example, if you had a mobile phone using GPRS, you could simultaneously make calls and receive email messages. With GPRS, we also saw the advent of IP, which stands for Internet Protocol. Now, IP is a transmission protocol or a language that enables compu computers to communicate with each other and which enables us as end users to use the Internet as we know it today. By the way, the Internet or the World Wide Web can be referred to as the largest computer network in the world today. So before the introduction of GPRS, the available radio capacity or spectrum was used inefficiently to send voice and data. This was because for data communication the entire channel was occupied for that specific packet and that in communication terms is a very inefficient usage of the network. GPRS or 2.5G changed all that. Resources were now only taken up when there was actual data to be sent. This meant that communication channels were now freed up making it possible for more than one user to share that same channel, which was previously reserved for only one user. Another intelligent characteristic of GPRS is that several different channels can be used for data transfer, depending on which are available or free, and this further enables greater transfer feeds and capacity. <music> 3G was a huge step forward in the evolution of cellular communications bringing with it many enhancements. We could now truly refer to broadband and exclusive packet data. 3G Networks has systematically introduced a range of technologies, the acronyms for which we have over time become familiar with. There is EDGE, or Enhanced Data Rates for Global Evolution, CDMA, Code Division Multiple Access, EVDO, Evolution Data Optimized, and UMTS, Universal Mobile Telecommunications System. 3G boasted speeds or throughputs of 3.1 megabits per second on CDMA networks, while in reality users experience speeds of between 500 to 700 kilobits per second. This is 7 to 10 times faster than GPRS. Of course, the downside is that these speeds are always going to be variable and dependent on the amount of traffic. An interesting example of the variation of speeds is demonstrated on the 3G iPhone. The first iPhone used Edge technology, Edge being an evolution of the 2.5 generation GPRS. Now a key measure of the types of speeds you can expect on 3G are 144 kilobits per second when you are moving rapidly, or 384 kilobits per second when you are moving along slowly, and up to 2 megs per second when you are stationary or indoors. In reality, the iPhone could not yield these numbers under every circumstance due to factors such as user traffic, which share the same network, and one can think of traffic jams on a freeway which bring the flow of traffic to a halt. Now UMTS, one of the later 3G technologies, uses something called Wideband Code Division Multiple Access, or commonly known as WCDMA. This is a radio access technology that offers greater spectral efficiency and bandwidth to mobile network operators. In other words, more simultaneous users, more speed and more bandwidth. WCDMA is therefore the underlying radio technology we now use in our cellular networks. On we marched and the EDGE technology evolved into HSPA or High Speed Packet Access. Providers such as Telcom, Vodacom and MTN all extensively marketed the advent of HSDPA or High Speed Download Packet Access as well as HSUPA or High Speed Uplink Packet Access with its promise of much increased speeds. HSPA was dubbed 3.5G because it was simply an enhancement of 3G that enabled much faster speeds. How much faster one may ask? Well, when one considers that Edge and its realistic speeds are 500 kilobits to 1 meg, compared to what HSPA now promised, a whopping 14.4 megabits per second. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, such speeds are erratic, subject as it is to effects of traffic loading, the handset's distance from the cell, and radio propagation. 3.6 and 7.2 megabits per second, however, are common phenomena now and new devices such as the latest iPhone have this technology already built in. HSPA Plus is an evolution of HSPA that upgrades the existing 3G network 
and also provides the methodology for telecom operators to migrate towards 4G speeds without having to deploy a new radio interface. Called Evolved High Speed Packet Access, the HSPA Plus is a further evolution in technical standards for wireless broadband telecommunication. It provides higher 3G speeds for the end user, comparable in fact to the newer LTE or long-term evolution networks. Data rates of up to 168 megs per second to the mobile device or downlink and 22 megabits per second uplink from the mobile device have already been achieved. At this juncture, however, it is important to note that HSPA Plus should not be confused with LTE, which uses a new technology altogether. Technically speaking, high HSPA Plus speeds are cleverly achieved by communicating over a multiple antenna technique known as MIMO for multiple input and multiple output, and also by combining multiple cells into one with a method known as dual cell HSDPA. HSPA Plus also offers significant battery life improvements and dramatically quicker wake from idle time. And it delivers a truly always on connection. <music> 4G is the latest, as of 2012, technology to hit the stage and it brings with it a number of exciting enhancements and possibilities. Whereas 3G and earlier generations are all based on relatively conventional telecoms technologies, 4G is digital, broadband, packet-based, and very importantly, all IP. It enables simultaneous voice, known as voice over IP, and data communication, meaning that voice is free. What's more, it enables very high throughput. The downside is that currently there are no formal accepted definitions or standards as to what classifies as 4G. One view claims 4G throughputs greater than 100 megabits per second, but in general such levels are not yet commonplace by any means. You can however expect to see in the order of 3 to 5 megabits per second, which is certainly not too shabby. Actually it's quite astonishing. Consider that DSL type speeds are now being attained on mobile moving devices. Wi-Fi by definition fits in here as well. Even though Wi-Fi is not regarded as a cellular technology, it supports handoffs. There is work underway now to be able to do these handoffs at relatively high motion speeds. And if Wi-Fi were to be deployed on a metro scale, we could see end user speeds of greater than 100 megabits per second, and it could become a key element in the future rollout of 4G. Even WiMAX can claim a spot here. In spite of it being formally regarded as a 3G technology, it is in fact much faster than the defined 3G speed of 2 megs per second. However, it is LTE, or long-term evolution, that is today synonymous with 4G. LTE is in fact an evolution of UMTS, and it is here that most of today's industry discussions take place in rolling out of 4G speeds and services. To wrap up then, is there a 5G? No, not at this point in time. However, the term gigabit wireless is bandied about as the next big thing to be tackled by engineers and carriers. So there is always something to look forward to in this amazingly dynamic environment that is cellular communications. One thing is certain, we as end users can look forward to amazing bandwidth, speeds and the services that it enables. Mobile or cellular is certainly changing how we go about our daily lives. I hope you have found this information session interesting and that it has given you a clearer understanding of the cellular world that we are all part of and how it has evolved. I'm Nico Gibson. Thank you very much for spending this time with me and goodbye.